In today's video, we are going to continue to configure our CI traditional controller in order to get ready to use it as a template for configuration as code. As we're going through this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up our client controller that we're going to be using as our template controller to create the bundles that we're going to use for our new controller. So if you haven't watched the first video yet to get an understanding of what's really going on right now, the link for that video will be down in the description and it should be showing up right here, right about now. As a quick recap, here's our operation center and we have our controller already connected and Configure Global Security has single sign-on selected. Okay, so let's get started. Let's go into CC1. Right now, this only has plugins that were installed from install suggested plugins. This is a vanilla controller. So there are gonna be two plugins that we have to install specifically to be able to use configuration as code. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're gonna to go to Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, and we're gonna to go to Available. Now, everything that I'm talking about right now is documented over on the documentation site. So if you're not sure where to find this, go watch the previous video. I walk you through how to get to this specific documentation page for traditional platforms. Let's go back over and start installing our plugins that we need. The first one that we need to install is the configuration as code plugin. And we're going to take this one right here that has both a version and a release. We're going to select that. We're not going to do any of the installations yet because we're going to get all the plugins that we need to install first, and then we'll go from there. The other one that we have to install is the CloudBees Task API plugin. We'll select this one again that has both the version and the date. Now, this is enough. This is all that we have to install for configuration as code. But there's a couple of other plugins that I want to install so you can see how other configurations happen within the bundles. The first set of plugins that I'm going to install are the ones that are used for cross-team collaboration. And in that case, we need three plugins. I'm going to do Notification API. I'm going to do that one. I'm going to do Operations Center Notification. I'm going to do that one. And finally, I'm going to do Pipeline Event Step. And we're going to do that one. So now we have our plugins selected for both configuration as code. There were two plugins for that. We're also installing our plugins for cross-team collaboration. There are three plugins for that one. And I believe that's going to be it. Those are going to be the only plugins that we install on this controller. You may have other plugins that you install and use, but for this example, I'm going to keep everything scoped to just configuration as code and cross-team collaboration. Now let's go ahead and click on download now and install after restart. And once that moves from pending into ready to be restarted, Okay, activated in the next boot. Let's go ahead and do the restart. And now that our controller is back, let's go and take a look at what has changed here. We can see under Manage Jenkins, we have a section now called Configure Notification. This is related to the cross-team collaboration plugins that we just installed. We also see this new section for CloudBees Configuration as Code Bundle, again, we don't have to do this at the moment, but this we'll be visiting this in, a, in a, just a little bit. So to get started, one of the things I want to do is I want to go ahead and configure Advisor. So I'm going to click on Configure Now, and I'm going to agree to the terms and service. And if you haven't watched a previous video on Advisor, a link to a video about Advisor will be down in the description. I'm going to go ahead and set up my email. And I'm going to suppress the reminder and click Save. So we've set up Advisor that cleared this big blue banner that was up here. Now what we want to do is go ahead and configure our system. And as we configure our system, we have a handful of changes that we want to make. So first off, we want to set our number of executors to zero. 
I'm going to set a label of ASDF, 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 basically just some random character string. I'm going to change the usage to only build jobs because this will make it to where there are no jobs that are able to run directly on the controller. By the way, if you didn't know that, jobs should never run directly on the controller. So we're removing the, the executors directly from the controller. Okay, next thing up, we are going to change our system admin email address. And we are going to change that to, I'll try to make it the same here, Darren Pope. And I'm gonna say dpope at cloudbees.com. We'll leave the URL there as normal. We're gonna change our pipeline durability to performance optimized. And I believe the last thing, let me look at my notes. No, not the last thing, but we're getting close to the last thing. We are going to set up a global pipeline library. I'm going to give it the name of shared, whoops, library. The default version is going to be main. And I'm going to use a modern SCM. I'm just going to use Git. Even though this is already at GitHub, I'm just going to use Git because this is a simple clone. So we'll do that. And then finally, we are going to set up our SMTP server. Now this isn't going to be set up for real, but I want you to be able to see in the configuration as code bundles, how this shows up. So I'm just going to put smtp.example.com. So I'm running against an SMTP server. I'm going to do that both in extended email notification and down in the email notification section. And that's all of the configuration that we're going to make under our configure system. So let's click on save. Now there is one more configuration that we are going to make and we're going to go to configure notification. We are going to enable notifi notification configuration and we're going to select operation center messaging. So now that we've finished configuring our controller that we're going to be using as a template, let's go ahead and take a look at what the configurations actually look like. So we're under manage Jenkins and we'll go to CloudBees configuration as code bundle. And bundles are made up of up to six files. There are at least three files that are always required and another three that are optional depending on how they're being used. The three that are required are Jenkins YAML, Bundle YAML, and Plugin YAML. The other three, Plugin Catalog, RBAC, and Items, are all optional depending on whether or not you have a configuration that applies to those files. Let's take a look at what our Bundle YAML looks like. So I can just click on a visualization and it will open up in a new tab for us. And we can see here, let me raise that up just a little bit more. There we go, that's a little bit better. We can see here there's an API version. This never changes. We have an ID and a description. These are just auto-generated in this case and you can name them whatever you want them to be. We have a version. This version is what tells the configuration as code subsystem of, okay, I'm moving from version one to version two to version three or you're going from one to 10 to 20, whatever it is, it just needs to be an increasing number. And as that changes, then that tells the operation center, hey, there's a change in this bundle that will then notify the connected controller that, oh, you, there's a new configuration for you. And we'll look at that once we actually do the applications. Then we have this definition here. We have plugins, maps to the plugin YAML, Jcask to Jenkins YAML, catalog to plugin catalog, RBAC to RBAC, and items to items. As I was saying before about the optional items, in our case that we're going to see here in just a moment, we are not going to need catalog, RBAC, or items. So we will be deleting this from our bundle YAML. Let's go and close this up. Let's take a look at our, mm, let's take a look at plugins first. And plugins, this is a full listing of all of the plugins that are currently installed on this controller. So if you think about, we did an install suggested plugins during the initial installation, or at least I told you that's what I did, which is true, that is what I did. 
And then we installed five extra plugins. We installed the, where is it? Configuration as code. We installed CloudBees Cask API. We installed the three for cross team collaboration, which was operation center notification and then notification API, and then also pipeline event step, which is right here. So I'm confident that this plugin list is correct and is the plugin list that I'm going to want to use for my new controller. So this plugin list, pretty straightforward YAML file, and it's also in alphabetical order. And you'll see why that's maybe important a little bit later on. Let's take a look at our Jenkins YAML. And with our Jenkins YAML, we have a Jenkins top level item and we go through all this configuration. In fact, if we take a look at this, the label, our ASDF, 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 that's our label for our controller. Our number of executors is set to zero. Remember, we changed it from two to zero. Here's our advisor configuration section. We configure your advisor, it's like, yes, I accepted the terms and conditions. Here's the email I want things sent to. This is the configuration. There's a beekeeper section. Here's our notification configuration. This is for the configuration for cross-team collaboration. So we enabled it and we set our section. We either could have selected local or we could have selected operation center. We selected operation center. And then finally, we have under this unclassified section at the bottom, we have email ext. The only change that we made right there is SMTP host. We set it to smtp.example.com. And we also set up our mail to smtp.example.com. So this is the basic configurations that we need to watch for as we set up our bundle for our new controller. Let's go back and take a look at the other three files that are there just so you can understand really what's not there at the moment. If we take a look at plugin catalog, it's completely empty. There's no configuration, nothing to look at. So it's just an empty file. This is the reason why we don't need to include it because if it's completely empty, it doesn't need to be referenced in the bundle. Now for RBAC, what we see is we have remove strategy, RBAC sync, but that's the default. So this isn't really necessary either. It wouldn't hurt to have it in there, but it's that's the default configuration, so it doesn't matter. And for items, same thing. There's a default strategy here, but again, since this is the default, we don't need to include this file in our bundle. So let's go ahead and close that back up. So now what I have is I've got a repository set up and I'm going to take my files for bundle YAML, plugin YAML, and Jenkins YAML and create a folder and put the files in that. So right now, let me open up my editor. I'm gonna size it up just a little bit. And this repository is a public repository on GitHub. So if you want to take a look at it later, feel free to. The link for it will be down in the description. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. And just as a convention, and this is the convention I use, you may come up with a different convention. Doesn't really matter. I know the name of my controller is going to be CC2. So I'm just going to create a folder called CC2. And within that folder, I am going to create a new file. And it's going to be named bundle.yaml. And notice how it's spelled, fully spelled out YAML. Each of these files need to be named this. These names are very important. So if you were to change it to .yml instead of .yaml, you would have a problem. Now, you have two options. You could either download the file, and this would just actually download the file for you, and you would just have the file, or you can click on Copy. And it's going to copy the content of Bundle YAML, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back over to my editor and just paste it in. Now, since I know that I'm going to be naming this one CC2, I'm just going to change CC1 to CC2. And I'm going to change the description to, let's say this is, this is the CC2 bundle. Okay. I'm going to leave version one, never change API version. Well, I'm saying that API version one is the only API version that exists today. If that was to change in the future, then there may be a reason to change it. But for now, I don't need to touch it. This version, we will be making changes to over the next couple of videos. 
plugins I definitely need and the Jink and Jaml I need, but I'm going to remove these three file references here because we're not going to need those. So there's our bundle YAML. Let's go over to, let's create our next file. And this file is going to be plugin YAML. Yep. And let's go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to do a copy and paste. No changes necessary there. In fact, I'm going to leave that extra line there at the bottom. I'm not concerned about that. That all looks good. And finally, we're going to create our Jenkins.yaml. And this is where we're going to be getting creative. So we've copied our Jenkins YAML. We'll paste that in. Okay, let me size this down just a little bit. Okay, from my perspective, I am okay with ASDF, ASDF, ASDF. That's fine. That's all I really care about for there. Num executors, that's good. We'll leave all the update site. We're going to leave advisor set up exactly the same way. I'm going to leave the email set up the same. This would give you the opportunity. It's like, oh, for advisor, I might want to send those emails to somebody else. Well, this would give you the ability to change that email. Not going to make any changes to Beekeeper. We're not going to make any changes to our cross team collaboration related item. So let's get down to where changes do occur. One of the things that we're going to do is this sort of bogus SMTP password. It's not necessary, so we're going to get rid of it. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for any existences of CC1, which right now I have two, and I'm going to replace them with CC2. So let's go and find the first one, which we're already on it sort of right down here. So I'm going to replace that one. And the second one is for the URL because the URL will be CC2. Okay, so that takes care of CC1 to CC2. Under our shared library, which is also referenced as global libraries, we can see I have shared library, default version main, that's fine. The one thing I do want to do is this ID. I want to remove this ID. The ID will be recreated once it gets installed, so that's not necessary. So in this case, we can remove that. I believe that's the majority of the changes that need to be made. But here comes the most important one. And this one is specific to Cloud BCI for traditional. If you're using Cloud BCI for modern, this is not required. What would be required is you would actually delete this whole section if you were modern. But since we are traditional, we have to provide a connection detail string, at least at the time of this recording. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to my Operations Center, go to Controllers. I'm going to create a new one. And I'm just going to leave all the defaults in place for that. And now I have my connection detail string. So I'm just going to copy this and go back over to here. And in fact, right below it, I'm going to paste it in. Using spaces, not tabs. Whoops. Rid of that one, and now I will delete this. This is specific only to traditional because we have to set up everything, quote unquote, by hand. So we have to define the actual connection detail string, at least at the time of this recording. So let's recap again what we did. We created our bundle YAML file, we made a change to ID and description, and we deleted the three extra items for plugin catalog, RBAC, and items because we don't need that right now. The version is still set at one, API version always at one, at least for now. Take a look at plugins. Again, a very simple copy paste over no changes necessary for the plugin YAML. And then finally, in the Jenkins YAML, we've gone through and verified all the changes necessary for moving from a CC1 controller to a CC2 controller. So we took the configurations that were specific to CC1, changed them as necessary to reflect what they would be in CC2. In that case, it was the CC literally CC1 to CC2. And we also changed the operation center connection detail string. 
Everything else stayed reasonably the same. Now that we have all of those files in place, let's go ahead and get this committed and pushed up to our repository. So I'll just call this CC2. And, oh, I never saved them all. Silly me, let's do a save all. And now we can do that. And we'll call that CC2. And we will push that up to our repository and we'll take a look at that before we leave. All right, that's probably already up there. Let's go over here to github.com slash Darren Pope. And let's go take a look at our repository. So it's Clobby's CI traditional cask bundles. We have a CC2 and we have our bundle. We have our plugins and we have our Jenkins. And that's all that we're gonna do in this video. In the next video, we're gonna pick up right where we left off. We'll be going back over to our operations center. We're gonna be setting up a job to pull in that data from that repository and then start setting up our new CC2 controller. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.